What's up, Cinephiles? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I'll be reviewing the only movie that I'm actually looking forward to watch in this year's Metro Manila Film Festival held digitally on the Upstream Movie website. I'll be putting down the link on the description box below so you guys can check out all the lineup of the movies priced at 250 pesos each. And once you've purchased that, you can watch and rewatch it with your family for the next 24 hours. So I think that's already a good deal. Anyway, the movie that I'm talking about is Fangirl, written and directed by Antonio. Hadaune. This movie made its run on two film festivals earlier this year, Tokyo International Film Festival and Tallinn Black Knights Film Festival. That's why it's really gaining so much hype since then and I'm really excited to watch it. And I can say that boy, I was not disappointed by this movie. This movie has depth and layers and not just about blind idolatry. The movie sprung with more sociopolitical issues by the end. All that in nuance and also in the mastery of the acting performances, especially for Charlie Deason because this is the role that will finally make her mark as one of the young actresses to watch out her for. So in this story, Charlie plays Jane, a 16-year-old obsessive fangirl who's been really longing and desiring to meet her idol, Paolo Avellino, playing a fictionalized version of himself. So in here, she knows every single detail about him from the teleseries to all of the rumors. This girl is your obsessive number one fan. She even takes things further by hitching a ride on the back of her pickup truck. After a mall tour, not knowing that Paolo Avellino is actually headed to the province. From there, we see the story moving forward. They get to spend the night with each other, an unforgettable night, and she will finally learn the saying of what it means, that saying, um, never meet your hero. So she will have a hard and painful lesson about that. This movie is going to be bleak and fearless. This is something that I did not expect to come from Antoinette Hadaune. As we Pinoy cinephiles know, she is one of the most sought after writer-directors when it comes to the Pinoy rom-com genre, no matter how saturated that genre is. And yeah, I've been following her since I first saw that thing called Tadhana, one of my favorite indie rom-coms of all time. To the more recent ones, we have Love You to the Stars and Back and Alone Slash Together. So to put out something as her darkest movie to date, this is really surprising, a pleasant surprise actually and you know it actually makes sense because she has worked a lot with love themes and in a way she has submerged into this celebrity culture where fans get over silos to the point that they try to invade the privacy of their idols so yeah she might have an experience or two when it comes to these fans mostly when we're talking about love theme fans we have a lot of girls who are stereotyped as brainless fans who will do everything so it's really nice to see things on the other side of the scope and also sometimes when it comes to fan bases sometimes adoration is not enough so as i've said this fans can be intrusive at times in here jane will do a lot of things just to get closer to her idol and she might regret some of those things as you know be careful what you wish for this girl is just a hopeless and naive girl who would do anything to get inside that celebrity culture bubble to actually learn more about that person and as you might have seen in the trailer that person will turn out not to be exactly who he is we've seen on the trailer that Paulo here is a smoker an alcoholic and there are way more things that she's bound to know about this person so yeah that's where the theme of blind idolatry will come honestly i might have found myself in the same position as jane before because being young you tend to put your blinders on and be oblivious to all the negative things that your idol will do we tend to forget once we put them on the pedestal that these are actually people who can be despicable who are capable of doing vile things and we try to justify them and we try to act cool around them and yeah it very much rings true into the present context because just heading to the twitter you can see that stand culture going on and you know younger minds tend to be impressionable they just see these idols as an idealized concept as for jane here this is going to be a rude harsh awakening for her that sometimes monsters can take a ship's clothing but actually before the movie gets into that point i like that the movie started off with jane being the stalker and paolo here being the prey as we've said jane here is an obsessive fan and her desire can tend to be sexual in nature that she she is actually gauging the next steps because this is wish fulfillment at its finest she's already given a chance to be close to him so yeah for the most part of the movie she lets 
the curiosity and the desire consume her and we even see here some artistic choices from Antoinette Hadaune in the dream sequences here taken in rose colored lenses because this is the perception here of the fangirl of what it means to idolize someone to overlook their flaws to become naive of the situation that there's actually horror or in something disturbing that's happening so we see that change in the cinematography happen in a couple of times in the movie and I think that was excellently handled also when it comes to blind idolatry I was reminded with one of the movies that I got to see in last month's Pistano Peliculang Pilipino that movie in particular is He Who Is Without a Sin though that movie I felt kind of mixed with its ending because it kind of left me hanging just when things are about to get more interesting and this one fangirl gave the third act resolution that I needed here what fangirl makes a more triumphant more successful on the things that it wants to achieve by the end of the movie is that it puts more theft and it connects that obsessive celebrity culture into more pressing issues that our country is facing nowadays especially on the third act of the movie because there are political undercurrents here at which point my brain suddenly think that this is no longer about celebrity culture because idolatry is many things it can also pertain to religions it can also pertain to government officials politicians to lover and the movie makes a lot of allusions here towards the end that this obsessive celebrity culture can be connected to sexism misogynistic patriarchy ridden country that we have currently here for the character of Jane once that bubble fantasy has already been popped she is faced with the realities of her life because she's using Paolo Avellini's character here as a way to to escapism to get away with her problems and honestly you can't fault the girl because when you get to learn more of her life here it's actually a troubled life for any other kid out there it's only natural for a girl like her to cling on to whatever form of escapism she has and finally when reality slaps her in the face that is such a rude awakening for her Charlie Dyson here is undeniably a star in the making I've never seen her in other films before and this one is a really strong debut for me we get to experience this roller coaster of emotions that she's going to experience throughout this movie this life-changing experience of a night from her excitement to her killing to her surprise to disgust to spite this actress was able to handle all those intricacies that her character is required of this is such a brave and masterful portrayal for her and also Paolo Avellino here there comes a brave portrayal here to portray a character that's so unsavory also to bear it out literally and figuratively having all those tattoos plastered in his back well I can say 100% that Paolo is the perfect person for the job I think he's also given here a couple of moments to shine here but the one that truly stand out for me is Charlie the movie makes a point that it's terrifying disturbing for me it's something that's predictable but you know the movie takes its calculated steps to earn that conclusion and you know that conclusion is kind of left on the hanging it's actually an open-ended one but the more I think of it it's actually a more fitting one the movie's ending can be found something both as empowering and devastating at the end of the day Jane here is just one person in the society and no matter how she tries to stand up for herself if that society in itself is already riddled with misogynistic values she can only do so much for her Herself. when it comes to my gripes I guess there's only one scene there's one sensitive scene you'll know what I'm talking about once you've seen the movie uh, I think it went too long for my taste and actually I just wanted that scene to be shot with less revealing imagery so to speak you know because the movie has been on the POV of the young girl here and I think that scene could have used less of the male gaze but that's just the minor chinks on the armor in the overall presentation of the movie but overall this is one of the most subversive works that I've seen in Pinoy cinema. This one has an urgency to it to tackle all the issues that we have on having a misogynist country led by a <laughs> misogynist leader I've always been wanting for something to come out from MMFF that's something intellectually challenging that's something that's truly thought-provoking that's something that's emotionally complex and mature for the audience here can grow their taste and I think 
fangirl here will deliver what I've been wanting from the previous film festivals. Now, I'm not sure for the rest of the selections because as I've said, I just looked into the trailers and fangirl is the only movie that's actually has picked my attention. This movie has been nominated to a lot of categories including Best Actress for Charlie Deason and Best Film. This movie is a frontrunner, I would have to say. My final rating for this movie will be 4.5 out of 5 stars. And that's it for my review of Antoinette Hadaoni's Fangirl, now streaming on Upstream. Let me know what you think in the comment sections down below. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to us for weekly reviews of movies, TV shows, and video games. Thank you so much for watching. Until then, see you on the next one.